The purpose of this tutorial is to help you navigate the Microsoft Word application window. So the first thing that we're going to take a look at is the quick access toolbar. If ever you're in this program and you see this particular bar, my recommendation is that if you want to begin your start, take a look at each of these areas, which is referred to as a tab. So for example, we have a file tab, home tab, insert tab, design tab, layout, references, mailings, review, and view tab. So all of those are tabs at the top. When we look at the bottom part, we actually notice here we have groups. So what we see is that when we click on a particular tab, we will notice that each one of these sections has commands that are present. Many of them have icons to give us an idea of the type of action that can be performed when those items are selected. So these are called groups. So while we're on the Home tab, we notice, for instance, that we have the clipboard group, the font group, paragraph group, styles group. What's fascinating is that when we look at each tab and take a look at each group, we recognize that you have various commands, such as the clipboard group has paste, cut, copy, and format painter. Likewise, when we come and look at this particular group, we'll notice that the font group on the home tab has fonts, font size, bold, italics, underline, and many, many more. But the point that we're trying to make is that the easiest way for us to find what we're looking for is to think about the action we want to perform. So if I decided that I want to change the layout of a page, then I'd probably click on Layout, which is the Layout tab, and then I would actually look in somewhere like Page Setup, and I would try and find the relevant command that matches the action I want to perform. Let's take a look at the top area. So here we have what's referred to as the quick access toolbar. This has automatic default icons that are present. And if you hover your mouse over each one, it will give you an idea of the command that is present. So this is above the tabs but it is called the Quick Access Toolbar. Now, I really like this feature because it can allow you to customize it so that you can access icons that you regularly use. For example, you can click on this drop-down arrow in order to customize the Quick Access Toolbar. And if you know that you're the individual who likes to quickly print documents, you can actually select Quick Print. What will happen is when you have information that's shown in the middle of the page, then you can click on Quick Print so that you can quickly access that icon without having to select Home or File and select Print, which is a little bit longer. So you can really go for ease of use by just selecting the Quick Print icon. Another important area that we need to consider are these groups when we look to the right and we see what is commonly referred to as a dialog box launchers. This is an indicator that this particular group has similar icons that will allow you to extend the functionality of that area. So you can click on these dialog box launchers and in here you can see more commands are available for you to perform additional actions in Microsoft Word. Likewise, we'll notice that when we select the dialog box launcher to the right of paragraph, we find that we have additional features, again, that are available to us as it relates to that particular group in order for us to find actions that relate to what we want to do. And we can see again that that is available 
when we click on the Styles dialog box launcher. Now when we look in the middle of the screen, we immediately notice that this is the area that we can type in for us to begin adding information into the document. So this is the space that you type in, commonly known as the document area. As you type and add information into your document, you'll notice at the bottom, we actually have what's referred to as the status bar. And this will let you know how many words that you've typed. And in addition to that, if the program doesn't detect any errors, then we're going to see this at the bottom. More importantly, if you decided that you wanted to zoom in and zoom out, you have the status bar area because you have the slider bar that can allow you to decrease the view or increase and zoom in with your view. Another nice feature allows you to right click on the status bar and here you'll notice that there are additional features available and one of them that we can use is the caps lock key. So if that is enabled and we know that we can see that on the status bar, then when your caps lock key is on, you'll see here in the status bar that that visibility is present. Likewise, if we turn caps lock off and I've pressed it on my keyboard, caps lock disappears. So that's a feature that you can have enabled or disabled. And to disable any of these features, all we have to do is select it. So if I want to disable the zoom slider feature, all I have to do is check it and you'll see it disappear to the bottom right. Now this is one of the common features that I really enjoy using. So I'm going to enable it by checking it and it brought it back. However, I'm going to turn off the caps lock key because that's not a feature that I commonly use. Now, if you decided that you wanted to recognize the views that are available to you on the status bar, you can hover your mouse over it. And here you can see that when I click this, we are now in the reading mode. In addition, when I move my mouse over into this direction, if I select it, it goes to the print layout view. And lastly, if I want to see what this would look like for a web page, I click on web layout view in order to see that. Now, my preference here is to go back to the print layout view, and that'll take me back to what I feel comfortable with. Another feature available to you is the sign in feature. So if you hover over this section and you were to log into Microsoft Word, what you would notice is that if your name was up here, then that means that you are actually signed into Microsoft Office 365. In my particular case, I'm not signed in, and therefore it's just only going to say sign in. Additionally, if you want to control how your program is responding in terms of restore, maximize, and so forth, if you hover over a particular area such as here, you'll notice that if I click on this, this is going to minimize the application window for Microsoft Word. I'm going to go back and bring it up. If I move my mouse here, this is going to allow me to restore the window to whatever the preset size is. I want to click it again to enlarge it. And if I wanted to close the entire application, I would select the X in order to exit Microsoft Word. Here it's saying, do you want to save the document prior to exiting? Because I don't want to even close it, I'm going to hit cancel. But if I wanted to save it, that could certainly be an option. And lastly, we look over to the right side. And here what we can see is that we have this vertical scroll bar and it lets you move your page up and down and I only have one page so that's all we're going to see as the status bar indicates I'm on page one of one if I wanted to quickly have another page just to show you this information what you would notice is that when there are multiple pages then the vertical scroll bar 
does expand to allow me to navigate to that area as well. Also, when we look in this section, this is currently saying document one. This is where you would see the title of your document. So if it had a different name, we would see something different. So we're going to take a break for a moment and show you what this looks like. So here what you see is that I've gone in and I've typed learning Microsoft Word, or in this case, learning Word 2016. Whatever you named your document, that'll show up here at the top in the title bar. That concludes this presentation. Thanks for watching.